Hey everyone, it's Holly with Wild Blessings and I am so thrilled to be with you tonight and have my good friend, author, speaker, um, game developer, wild woman. This is Suzanne Shires and um, she is really rocking it in the herbal world and we're just so proud. I'm very proud of you, Suzanne. Um, <laughs> today we had her as an encore class from two years ago when she came to be with me in my wild kitchen. She gave a wild food demonstration. Um, she's a multi-generational um, herbalist and forager. And so what I love about her book, this is her first book. This one is called Wild Herb Gardening. Is she tells some of her stories of her grandmother and and of her um, heritage in the wild. So I love that. And I also love the way she's making herbalism fun for this next generation. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, I just want to welcome you. And um, I'm drinking coffee sweetened with hickory, hickory bark um, syrup, which um, Suzanne taught me how to make out of hickory bark, which smells amazing. So what are you drinking, hon? I just finished up an apple cider that had spice bush and cinnamon and a few other wild things in it, a little bit of sassafras syrup uh, to spice it up. Right now I'm drinking my water with some elderberry vinegar in it that I, I made the vinegar uh, <laughs> and I poured it up today and uh, put it in a crock so that I can I always keep my vinegar in a crock and I feed it to make it stronger so I can just dispense it as I need it because I drink it. I drink vinegar every day. Um, so I've had quite a few things all day and I just finished my cup of my mug of cider so I can't toast you. I'll toast you with my water. <laughs> okay. Well, guys, we've been waiting for over two years for what she's about to share with us. She has completed a wild foods cookbook called Beyond the Garden Gate. And I know you all have been waiting for this. And so it is out. It's been, it's published and ready to purchase. And so I wanted to um, give you the floor and tell us all about it. Oh, oh well, thank you. Um, this book is a labor of love. It's been uh, years in the making. And uh, I actually just, the, the information just would come out and come out and come out. And I realized one day that I had about 700 pages. So I had to condense it down. Um, so there's about 300 uh, recipes in the book. There's a hundred plants and I use them. I use these plants over and over. This, it sounds like a lot. If you're, if you're a beginning forager or if you're a, a, an experienced forager, you'll find recipes in this book that you can use because I use something called mundanes. As a matter of fact, if you have, uh, for example, like if you have lamb's quarter or, um, yeah, lamb, let's take lamb's quarter, for example, I tell you when you can use spinach if you don't have enough lamb's quarter or you don't know what lamb's quarter looks like or you, for some reason you, you just need to use something else, <clears throat> you can use spinach or another or another green. Uh, I give you the what I call mundanes. Uh, and that makes it easy for anybody. Uh, you learn the flavors of the of the wild foods, um, and it's the recipes are fun. We go from appetizers to pestos, salad dressings, compound butters, um, fruits and syrups and vinegars and main dishes. There's so many um, there's so many sections in this book, and a lot of pictures. This is not an ID book. I tell I tell you that multiple times. But um, it's not an ID book. So once this is a book for once you find the herb, the the plant that you want, uh, take your ID book with you in the in the field because this thing is three pounds. It's a big book. Take your ID book, find your plant in your backyard in a field. Come back and uh, make your recipe in your kitchen. Uh, or if you cook outdoors, I cook outdoors a lot and I talk about cooking outdoors in the book, um, but you can cook on a stove, in the oven, in an air fryer. There's there's a lot of different ways to cook in this book, a lot of salads and things like that as well. But I, 
that's one of the things I wanted people to understand in this book that wild foods is not just a salad. It's um, it's sauteed greens. It's side dishes with with sauces or gravies, um, desserts with crusts and crumbles and and things like that. One of my favorites is actually a Dutch baby, which is basically a pancake with fruit and it's baked and has butter and it's so good, but it uses the wild fruits. Uh, and if you have just strawberries from your garden or blueberries from your garden, you can use those too. So it's, it's just Absolutely. a fun book to have. So. Oh, that's wonderful. I think preparation is key. You know, you can have a wild edible plant and if you don't prepare it properly, it could taste like grass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we talked a lot kind of about taste. seasons. Okay, so Suzanne, um, we were talking about the importance of making things taste good. And um, so it has a lot to do with preparation. And I was asking if you have any seasonings in your cookbook. Oh, yes, I do have a whole chapter on seasonings, syrups, um, salts, uh, infused salts. As a matter of fact, I, I hardly ever use a plain salt, a plain sugar, uh, or um, a plain garlic even. My, all of my seasonings are usually compound seasonings, compound sugars, compound salts. And all that means is you're just infusing the salt with a dried <clears throat> um, herb or whatever whatever you're using. Like for example, this the sumac. Um, I use a, a lot of sumac, uh, but I'll make za'atar or I'll make a garlic sumac, which is a, a nice lemony citrusy flavor. If you've never had it, it's a wonderful flavor uh, and it brightens up the dish, but I'll make the salt and I'll make garlic with that. And those recipes are in the book as well. And I tell how to make those. Um, syrups are wonderful for flavoring. If you want to make a barbecue sauce, for example, I make a I make a um, a sumac hawthorn ketchup, and then I'll just add peppers to it to make a barbecue sauce or pepper grass, um, something like that. I make something called Nature's Salty Pepper, uh, which is a little bit spicy. There's really no heat to it, like you would get with a jalapeno or or a hotter herb or hotter uh, pepper. But the herb does have a little bit of spice to it, a little bit of an aftertaste, and it makes a wonderful uh, infused salt. So there's there's several recipes, and they're very simple, very easy to do. Very um, uh, the the process is really simple, and so it, anybody can make a seasoning. How can we get a hold of this amazing resource and um, tell us the skinny on that? Okay. Um, the book is available on my website, simplehomesteadliving.com. Uh, there's other books there available. My other book is there and uh, it's, uh, it's available. I ship it right out. I can send you a signed copy. It is available at Barnes and Noble. Um, however, if you will order from my website, I, I can sign it that way. I can't sign them if they come straight from Barnes and Noble. Um, so they are available uh, for delivery. I'm not sure if I can get them to you before Christmas if you're ordering today. Uh, if you don't want a signed copy, I can get it to you. Um, but by the time it comes to me and I sign it and I ship it out, it may not get to you by Christmas. However, I will send uh, a card uh, or a, an email that you can print out, a little certificate, guess what you're getting or your book Good is idea. coming to you. Yeah. So, yeah, so great that way idea. you can have a gift. And Absolutely. they get a double gift. <laughs> yeah, it would be worth waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah. Yeah, it's been like, um, it's been a long time in coming. So we, we're excited that you finally got this thing birthed and it's out there and published. And um, so let, let us know, guys, if you order one and what you think of it. So that's exciting. Um, one of the things. The games I'm are available. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yes. Oh, let's talk about the games. All right. So one of the reasons why. I think uh, Suzanne is amazing is because she has actually created games for children and for big kids like us to um, incorporate our knowledge of wild foods and of herbs and plants and trees. And so she has one that I absolutely adore called Go Forage. And I actually did a video on this last year. So I'll just post that at the end of this. So look at, watch that because this is just an incredible game. It involves every aspect of uh, how many different herbs did you put or plants did you put into this uh, card game? There's, there's 27 herbs, uh, 54 cards. So there's two cards per herb and one card will have the environmental 
uh, things like where it's found, how it grows, uh, mm -hmm. how the seeds form or the flowers form. And then the other card will be about how you use it. So, for example, I've got uh, a couple here just so that you can see them. Um, Blue Vervain, for example. There's two cards. Whoop, two. <laughs> Let's see, we'll use chicory. Here's chicory. Uh, two cards for chicory, uh, and the information is different on either card, and you can play matching games, or you can play, I uh, named this Go Forage, uh, which is played like Go Fish. Have you ever played Go Fish? Well, now you can play Go Forage. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, kids love it. Uh, they're learning a ton of information. Um, so as an adult, as an adult uses it as well. So. I, I made it for herbalists. Yeah, herbalists of all ages uh, can play it. Yeah, it's been highly successful. People love it. So I sure do. Uh, and then the one that I have in front of me right here is called mm -hmm. Tree Bingo. And so can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> tree Bingo. Uh, and there's there's also Herbal Bingo and Mushroom Bingo as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, there's 36 uh, plants on each uh, card on each uh, in each game, and then the cards are are arranged differently, just like a regular bingo. Uh, but instead of calling out B13, for example, you call out um, the the either the um, you can call out either the common name or the botanical name. Both are listed on there, and a good photo for reference. And the cards are waterproof, so if the kids are playing with it outside, I encourage you to go and find seashells or um, or acorn caps, things like that to use for markers. Mm -hmm. um, you get out and just another way to get out in nature. Little pebbles are cute too. So, uh, but it's just a fun nature game, uh, and you're learning not only the common name but the uh, the botanical name as well which is really important uh, people don't realize how important the botanical names are because a, a plant can have two different or, or two different names can be used same name can be used for different plants if it, in a different area like queen of the meadow for example there's i can name at least three plants that are also called queen of the meadow so it's really important to learn that that what that plant actually is so yeah. you learn both of those. Right. I think it's so great to have games that are so educational that you're learning without even realizing you're learning. That's but true. Um, So I, I used these. Um, these are chestnut oak acorn caps, and I've got some white oak acorn caps. So, for mm -hmm. example, I'm going to pull up this card right here, and this is a buckeye. And so the purse, then you reach in here. Instead of using plastic, you can use these. And there's a buckeye right there when you get four in a row then you would say bingo and um and then i added to it i think i showed you this last year when i did this but i so if i would then have the kids reach over here and find the buckeye um clothespin that i had put together so it's got the buckeye oh, branch and the isn't that fun and the yeah. terminal bud and the buckeye um, buckeyes and then the husk kind of dried out like that and so for That's all the different fun. ones that you have on your um, tree bingo. So it kind of makes it more multi-visual and tactile as well. That's awesome. So I do love that. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm excited. Thank you so much for doing our um, uh, sharing about your latest book. I hope everyone goes out and gets that. And um, what I've been working on is the Christmas Advent with Wild Blessings which is a creative path to celebrating the coming of Jesus using the wonders of nature and um, the natural world. And so I think that's wonderful. <laughs> I know I'm having fun. I got the idea from uh, when I was a kid, my aunt Miriam made an advent calendar for us, which I actually have here on the refrigerator, which I'll just take a picture of it. But this is the actual one from when I was a little child. And so every day of the month of December, we would, grab a, a verse or a card out of the um, pocket that it came with and it would have the messianic prophecy and we would look up the scriptures and read them together as a family and then she had made these beautiful um no oh, i should have done this beforehand um, she made these beautiful ornaments out of felt and then we would put them on the tree there's a little green felt christmas tree and then by the time we got to christmas day the whole christmas tree was decorated with these felt ornaments. And so it was just a really precious memory to me. And um, so I got to thinking that I would like to do that with Wild Blessings. And so 
every day there's a scripture concerning the coming Messiah. And because there's so many prophecies concerning the promised Savior. And uh, the, he, Jesus Christ fulfilled all of them. And so um, those scriptures are part of it. And then music and movies and messages that would illustrate and bring to life those scriptures. And then activities like going foraging for nature scraps um, or making ornaments or decorating your Christmas tree. Look at this beautiful ornament there. Isn't that pretty? Oh, how and, beautiful. Um, you do yeah, such pretty so this, It's got foxtail grass and it's got um, Black Eyed Susan seed pods and it has um, Rose of Sharon and um, Iris seed pods. And so it, it's just ridiculously fun. So I have spent zero money on, on decorating any of my gifts this year or my tree or my house. It's just all made with nature scraps. So to oh. me, it's just all worship. And then I provide recipes um, that are from things that we foraged with either in previous months or that you can still get out there now. And um, so the activities and recipes and then handouts, and it's just a wonderful rhythm. So I'm having fun with that. So you can, you can find it by going to wildblessings.com, go to Jesus, and then under that it says Advent, and you can follow day one through 25. So. Oh, that's beautiful. I'll have yeah. to go there and look at it. Yes, please do, and share it with people. So oh, here's no. an example of a recipe I'm doing. These are chestnuts. Have you ever done this where you make maroon glaces? No, I want to know more about them. Yeah, <laughs> this is one of my recipes. So they actually, the kings would uh, make these for the peasants back in medieval times. And um, probably the peasants gathered the chestnuts. <laughs> but they would soak them in the, in the sugary substance and they're, they're absolutely delicious. I made them last year for the first time, but this year I'm gonna actually make them even more interesting by making kettle corn and including this into the kettle corn. So that'll be delightful. Um, that'll be things delicious. like sitar, which is, I use that a lot. I, I cook a lot with sumac. And then decorating, here's a Christmas tree that Tina Roberts decorated for me. Um, Rachel Sammons had done this, decorated this tree for me, I don't know, 13 years ago, and it was looking pretty pitiful. So I asked Tina if she would come over and, and give it a facelift. And so she's got little um, poppy seed seed pods, and she's got snake skins and mushrooms. And uh, there's a um, sweet gum seed pod. And oh, there must be at least 80 different types of amazing nature crop, nature scraps. And um, the beauty in them is is remarkable. So do you have anything natural that you put on your Christmas tree? Well, I do. I used a lot of, of um, I've got some right here. As a matter of fact, I stuffed my tree with evening primrose. If you, I don't know if you can focus on this or not, but if you look at the little, tr they look like little trumpets and evening primrose is just beautiful to me. And these get nice and woody. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just a stem and I'll clip them off and just stuff them in, um, in my tree. And then I was walking through the garden and I found this little spot where the Queen Anne's lace had preserved that usually they close up, but these look like little snowflakes. I don't know if you can see that. So delicate. Um, they yeah. are. They're so delicate. And then um, some of them even looked, I've got two stuck together here. Hang on just a second. There we go. They're just, they just turned out so delicate. Um, wow. And so I've got those stuck all over my tree. And then um, I used a grapevine. I got your inspiration on the grapevine. Um, your other tree, I believe, has a, you usually have a grapevine on it. So I've wound several grapevines around my tree. And then I saw this online, and I'm sorry, I can't remember where I saw it. Uh, it was on a little meme, not a meme, but a, a reel. Someone made orange or made mushrooms from orange um, peel. You have to be real careful. I cut my orange in half and then just scoop out um, the, um, the the pulp. And if you do it very carefully, the membranes will even look like the gills. So that that one's a little crooked. But um, I used I was trimming my figs, and so I used fig stems. And my little orange, this is a lime. <clears throat> These aren't painted yet. Uh, she, the lady took 
um, her rust colored paint, wh whatever color she was using, browns and things, thinned it down and just made a wash on the skin. And these are dried. I've dried them and um, I have them hanging on a garland on the tree. <laughs> so um, that was just I a lot of fun. I love that. Can you send us a picture <laughs> of your tree? Take a, uh, sure. take a good picture of your tree and then I'll, I'll post that on Wild Blessings with Holly Drake. Okay. I will. And I'll put a picture of my tree as well. So okay. well, I think that pretty much covers it. I'm just so thrilled that um, I'm proud of you for the hard work that you put in and the way you're always benefiting by creating resources for people to, um, to benefit them and help them live more sustainably and more uh, closer to the earth. So thank you, Suzanne. Well, thank you. I appreciate you inviting me. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Bye.